Hello, and welcome to Data Research Labs. For this tutorial, we're going to discuss tips and tricks for Toad Data Point, a SQL IDE for data analysts. First up, a quick overview of Quest Software's Toad Data Point. Toad Data Point is a cross platform data integration tool. Data analysts use Toad to write and execute SQL, research and troubleshoot issues, build extracts and reports, do data profiling, and much more. Toad is not free and is typically used by larger corporate clients. What I like most about Toad Data Point is using it as a single common tool for all the dozen or more data sets and connections that I use spanning multiple platforms. SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, Green Planet Work, PostgreSQL, etc. And just look at this. If I add a new connection here, look at all of these types of data sources. Typical relational data sources, some of them out on the cloud, business intelligence data sources, OSQL data sources. It's pretty impressive all the different connections that you can get access to. And it's nice to have all your data connections in one spot and get used to using one tool. This video assumes you know your way around to a data point, but may not have had time to really get in and find all the productivity tips and tricks. So we're going to find those and focus on the SQL editor window and how to get the most out of that. Next up, six nifty configuration tips you should be using. I suggest you pause this video and take a screenshot of these commands. Use it as a quick cheat sheet reminder to go configure your Toad data point after completing this video. I'm going to close the screen in three, two, one. Toad defaults to the larger buttons up here, icons in the main toolbar. The downside or the problem is the screen real estate when you're really busy working away, trying to screen share, you have your SQL editor here, your results here, you really want to cut this bar in half and get an extra couple of rows on screen. Just go into the options and environment and interface and check. There it is. Use large icons, uncheck it and hit apply. And there we go. Now they're smaller. Toad defaults to just dragging and dropping table names to the SQL editor window. No schema or database prefix. Here's an example. I'm going to drag the department's table name up, drop it off, insert name, voila. I get the table name, but I don't get the HR schema name. Notice that when I'm writing scripts that touch multiple databases or schemas, I'm always going to have to go in here and manually type hr.prefix. And that's the downside of that is it's slower, there's human error, I can have typos, etc. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can actually go into Tools, Options, and go to G Explorer, General, and check Use Fully Qualified Object Names. Okay, now we'll just grab this one, drag and drop job history, insert name, and voila. It prefixed the table name with the schema name. So in most integrated development environments, there will be line numbers subtly off to the side for quick reference. Writing SQL is no different. It's nice to have line numbers when you're sharing your screen for code reviews or training or troubleshooting. You can quickly navigate and focus attention to specific line numbers during the discussion. Here's a script without any line numbers. But if we go to Tools, Options, Editor, and General, and Show Line Numbers. Click Show Line Numbers and hit OK or Apply, and there we go. There's the line numbers. Now when I'm scrolling along and on a teleconference and I say, hey, on line 52, blah, 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 but on line 55, blah, 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 it's a lot easier for people to know what's going on. And someone can ask me, hey, what about line 41? Just like it's nice to have line numbers up here in your code editor window, it can be nice in your results grid to have line numbers as well. Same reasons for discussions and for better communication. To do that, go to Tools, Options, Environment, Grid, and show line numbers right there. Hit OK, and we have line numbers. How and why to alter the auto pop-up. So Toad data point defaults to a quarter second pause during typing, after which the IntelliSense pops up. Let me give an example here. So select star from quarter second, boom. I get my pop-up. Now, when I'm writing SQL, there's many times I write a little bit, pause, write a little bit, and this box, once you get really familiar with your schema, the box just gets in your way and you, you want to turn it off. But then you hit other areas of the schema you don't know so well. It's kind of nice to have the box. You don't have to go scroll down and drag and drop your components up. So sometimes I turn it completely off and other times instead of a quarter second, 
I set it to a one second delay. The way you do any of that is go to Tools, Options, Edit, Editor, and Code Completion, expand that, and set Auto Pop-Up to, and there's the, you can uncheck it, or you could set it to two seconds, there's two seconds, one second, whatever. So set it to whatever you want, and now, if I go back here from there. How to increase the number of tabs on the result window. Every data analyst is going to want to configure this setting. Look what happens by default when I run some SQL statements. Tab 1 gets results. Second SQL statement, tab 2 gets results. Tab 3, tab 4, I can rerun, I'll get a tab 5. Now this is the default limit, 5 tabs. Watch what happens when I run the next one. Is there going to be a tab 6? No, there's not. It overwrites set 1, tab 1 with results and so on. Why is that a problem? That's a problem because sometimes you're deep down the rabbit hole researching an issue and you want to have more than five tabs worth of results. So to do this, to fix this problem, go to Tools, Options, Database, and Script Results, and right here, the number of tabs result to display. It's five by default, but I'm going to bump it all the way up to 20. Hit OK. Now I'll just run the same thing over and over again and it should go it's past five it's going to go all the way out to 20 and then it's going to roll back around to there next up four nifty sql editor tricks you should be using how to drag and drop table or column names sure you can use toad's auto pop-up to pick your stuff but i don't like to i like to drag and drop so let's look at some examples of that select sure we could do star from and we could drag our table up here Drag our table name up here. So that's nice, but you can also, and this is handy too, down here in the columns, I can grab all those columns and just drag them, drop them up there. Common delimited list pops right up. And if you have 50 columns, 100 columns, whatever, just highlight them, drag them, drop them. Very nice. Frequently, you may need to temporarily bulk comment out a range of SQL. And sure, you could use the old school generic slash asterisk. Start your comment block and asterisk slash to end your comment block. You can do that. That works. But there's also another way in Toad. You can just highlight a range and right click and comment lines. And then you get the double dashes. And if you want to uncomment them, highlight the same selection, uncomment. Much like commenting on the previous slide, you can also do case, toggle it up or down. So I will just highlight that range. It's all up case right now. Make it lowercase and make it uppercase. So I've just sloppily written out some SQL here, paying no attention to the casing indentation. But Toad has seven different format styles that will automatically format your code for you. So I could click any given format style and change checkbox, nothing happens. But as soon as I click the paint, boom, it reformats the SQL. Went to uppercase, put every column on its own line, etc. Anyway, you can run through all the different format options that they have and pick one that you like. And finally, eight nifty tricks using the SQL results tabs. Whenever your SQL execution errors, you're running the SQL, the results will go to the messages tab. And to trigger that, I'm going to go put a bogus X in here, move off the screen, and I'm going to run the SQL. I'm going to get an error message. I'm going to hit close. There's my details. And what I really like is to double click the error and bam, it takes me right there. Even if it's off screen, double click the error, it takes you right to it. But for general SQL scripts, it's very handy. Double click, take you right to the error. From a results tab, if you've run your SQL, there's many different ways to export to Excel or text file or other formats. You can use the buttons up here, Excel, CSV file, do it in Excel instance, etc. But I tend to not do that. I prefer once I get the results that I like, highlight the whole thing, right click, and I'll do a quick export to Excel instance, and then it just pops it up in Excel. So here's Excel. It popped it up, it's not saved anywhere, and then I can file, save as. So I like that one. It's non-invasive, it's not saving it in my users folder anywhere, and I can do what I need to do with it. And you can also right click the data, quick export it out to file, and to a CSV file, etc. 
And finally, if I want every available option, I can right click and export and bring up the export wizard. And you can do everything from here, comma separated values, tab delimited, blah, blah, blah. You can even do SQL scripts. So let's say I have selected a bunch of data here. We'll just go run it. So I'm gonna select everything in the table, go, boom. 847 rows. But maybe I wanna make an in clause and maybe I want to select just those email addresses. So I can right click, copy the cells, not the rows, and do the third option, no headers, insert statement, or in clause. Hit OK. And in my clipboard, Control V, paste. There we go. So now, close the window and execute. And I shouldn't get 847. I should get just the 14 that have those email addresses. There are duplicates in there. It's rare, but there are times you want to edit table data in a results pane. Now you could run a select SQL and depending on your keys, primary keys and whatnot, you may or may not be able to edit it. The simplest way and the most useful practical reason that you would want to edit a table is for a reference table. So let's double click this build version table. It's obviously a reference table. Let's go to the data view and there we go. There's one row, maybe there's 10 rows, but maybe I want to change the version number for some reason, or maybe I want to insert a row. That's what this guy's all about down here. This little red button says the grid's read only. Because I'm looking at it in table view and it's keyed properly, I can just click the red button and it, whoa, in this case it's not. I'm getting one of those errors to edit the data, unique index. So I gotta find a table with a primary key that I can edit. There we go. This error log has a primary key and guess what? There's no data in it. So since there's a primary key, I can click the red. It should go to green, it does. There's no data edit, fine. Hit the plus, boom, it inserts a record. Now, I can hit the check to save changes or the X to cancel. I'm gonna hit the check and voila, I saved a row. If I go back to red, I can't edit it anymore. It should give me, yeah, it won't let me edit it. If I go to green, it'll let me edit it. Do the drop down, there we go. And these, We'll let you navigate between the records if there are multiple pages, insert a record, delete a record, save the changes, discard, cancel the changes. So it's handy when you don't want to write individual insert or update commands and it's a reference table and you just want to do it manually. Fine, just go down, click the red button, make it green and do your edits. The next trick is how to add column totals. You don't have to export your data to Excel for column totals. You can run your select statement, get your, some res get your results with some numeric values, and then built right in here into Toad, right down here, just follow the instructions, right click to add column totals, okay, unit price, right click. I wanna add hmm, a sum, there we go. Make it a little bit wider so you can see it all. 207,515 in this AdventureWorks test database. Line total, et cetera, so very neat, and let me right click. Min, max, you can do counts, variance, standard deviation, take an average, etc. Very handy, saves you time, so you don't have to right click, export to Excel, and add a total down there. So here's a feature I like to do, or use when I'm testing to keep the clutter down, and you may have accidentally run into it, but it's basically to run several queries at the same time and get them in the same ver uh, tab here vertically. And sure, I can, run this one, and then I can highlight and run this one and get a second tab and run this one and get a third tab and a fourth tab. But when I'm testing, sometimes I want the whole set. And so I'll run it here at one time and look at that. I get four different results all in one tab. And then maybe five minutes later, I run it again. And now instead of having four and four, that'd be eight tabs up top. I have two tabs up top and you can have 5, 10, 15, 20, a whole bunch of results down here. Very neat trick that Toad allows you to do. So Toad Data Point actually allows you to do data profiling. Anytime you have a run, I'll highlight that and I'll do a run down here in the test results grid. Guess what? There's a profiling tab. And so that profiling tab gives you statistics like what's the minimum value in a given column? So from this table, there's the columns, five of them. 
and for each column what's the minimum value the median value the maximum value numeric or alpha and gives you the type data type and actual type of the field and it gives you some other useful metrics like how many rows are populated 128 how many values are distinct it's an ID field they better be how many are unique slightly different how many are duplicates none how many are missing how many are nulls so how many are unique green blue down here is nulls what is that field catalog description a lot of nulls in there 122 so that gives you a bunch of data profiling you can even do full profiling and whatever my set is here 128 rows when I click the full profile I could do all the rows I will it's only 128 I could randomly sample 10 percent of the 128 but I'm just gonna do all rows profile now and I get more details I get a summary that I can walk through I get statistics pretty pretty nice get a frequency of the different values different pick a column it tells you how common commonly those occur patterns in the names alpha patterns etc making a pivot table I'm gonna be brief here I'm not gonna demo it but the next time before you export your data results out to Excel to use Excel's pivot table feature notice that there's a pivot table feature right here any given result set click on the pivot table and you have an Excel like pivot table where you drag and drop your component very handy saves you a trip out to Excel and it can also save you from writing complex SQL to pivot your data around if you just need to do a one-off use this tool rather than writing the more complex string aggregation or other pivoting techniques thank you for watching and please if you found this video helpful click like and subscribe also check out our other videos and related playlists in the boxes to the right